Welcome to the Verley Podcast, the leaders in real estate tech and marketing with your host, Tyler Irons. Welcome to the Verley Podcast. Today, we have on Zach Schreiber from Pinnacle Commercial Group. Zach, uh, appreciate you coming on with us. Yes, good morning, Tyler, and thanks for having me. It's good to be on your show. I think the last time we did this, I was the interviewer, so you were it's you, good to be in the seat. Yes, you now were an excellent us. host. A year later, who would have thought? Yeah, we're growing up, <laughs> slowly. But um, appreciate you coming on today. So I wanted to have you on and just talk a little bit about, you know, who you are, your background, and what you've been doing, you know, over 2020 with uh, Pinnacle Group. Yeah, well, obviously 2020 was a hectic, wild year with the pandemic. So mm-hmm. um, as you mentioned, I'm at Pinnacle Commercial Group. Uh, we're a small brokerage uh, based in Lincoln. Uh, but been doing a lot of brokering sales in Nebraska and looking to kind of expand nationwide. But to get right into it, 2020 was a, a wild year as I transitioned from a, d- a different brokerage over to Pinnacle Commercial Group, uh, where I have Boomer Peterson and Bob Peterson, uh, the broker there. So, yeah, um, I guess when I joined the team in 20, 2019, uh, they were awarded the Power Broker Award by um, CoStar which is one accolade that I do highly uh, acknowledge because it's a team effort. And uh, we were just awarded the 2020 Power Broker uh, Award of the Year. So we're really ecstatic, and uh, we think we have uh, a good chance to do so in 2021 and have a lot of activity uh, to carry over into this year. Yeah, well, uh, it says a lot to uh, come out with some awards and hardware after, you know, the old 2020 COVID. So. <laughs> That's, uh, that's impressive. You guys were able to maintain and, and keep growing and keep pushing the business forward during that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess last March, obviously, when the pandemic started to hit, things started to close down. There was a lot of what ifs, a lot of scenarios. Uh, a lot of investors were kind of lost in what we were going to do. And definitely sales definitely dried up uh, for a while. But our group remained strong, uh, knew that we were trading time and information and kept the conversations going with our builders, our developers, our investors. And then when things started to clear up a little bit and we had foresight what was going to happen, we were in a good position to make our investors make strong moves and we're continuing to see that activity. And now that things are kind of settling down again uh, with the election, all the politics, all that noise is kind of settled. Just every election, obviously, investors are hesitant what they're doing. Uh, With this one, there was a lot of what is with 1031 exchanges, and <laughs> interest rates from the Fed level and mortgage rates, like all that was definitely an impact and everyone was kind of hesitant. But now it, 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 there's a lot of pivoting happening across the board uh, where investors are, are definitely uh, trying, to <laughs> trying to liquidate some of their, ca- their capital and, and find the right deal, which is, is now, what we're ha- well now what we're seeing in 2021 is it's becoming a lot harder to find a good opportunity because of how much money has been flooding the market uh, from the investment standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I can definitely see that. What are some of your solutions for your investors or how are you helping them, you know, circumvent that so that they, they are able to find those properties or those deals? Yeah. I, I think, well, me and you personally have worked on a couple of commercial deals mm-hmm. and I think you're very understanding how important communication is. Someone like me and Boomer are constantly actively in the market and we come across more opportunities than most. That's why, uh, a lot of investors are hesitant to work with a realtor, a broker, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that have the most day-to-day action into that, the one reviewing the most deals. And so for us, it's uh, constantly staying in communication with all those investors and our builders and seeing that foresight uh, of what a good opportunity is and being able to make a quick decision. And so when we come to our investors, we build it up so that when we have that right opportunity that fits their needs, they're ready to pull the trigger and then on the back side, we have a good relationship with the appraisers, the, the lenders, and we all have a good understanding of how we can work together. And the most important thing that we did in 2020, for instance, was making sure that our we were closing those deals. Uh, obviously, if we're talking multifamily, there's issues with getting appraisals and, and posting notice and getting in with those tenants. Mm-hmm. So we are making those deals a lot more cleaner, where now in 2021, we're getting more listings posted on on the market where we did a lot more off-market deals in 2020. But I think this year we'll see a lot more deals go on the market just because you, we can create more of a competitive market and it's not, a, and, and we know that we can assure that 
our sellers are closing those deals. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense because I'm last year, I mean, everything we did together, you know, for my, for my own, my own stuff personally was, it was all off market. Mm-hmm. I don't think we did a single thing off, that was on market where this year, you know, I've noticed we are looking at more things that are actually on the market. So mm-hmm. that was a, that's a big uh, shift. I, I was like, I was pretty shocked by how much we actually, you know, you, you got, you got the deal off market. You had a very small amount of time to make a decision. And that was, that was the reality of the world we were in then. Yep. And it's, it's quite the training process for our investors or any investor. I think a lot of people were pulling some of their money out of the stock market and thought there would just be an easy opportunity. And so to like, again, going back to that communication where if like last year, for instance, I was fortunate to do 15 deals off market, but when those sellers come to me, I'm promising them that in 24 hours to 48 hours, this, this opportunity is going to be under contract so that we can find you that next opportunity to 1031 exchange. So uh, what we were really blessed to do was to upgrade and level up our investors' portfolio. So if they're selling a smaller asset type, like a single family investment property that they had, a duplex or a small commercial building, we were able to upgrade their portfolio that made more sense for them and their financial situation. So there was a lot of new coming investors looking at maybe multifamily because they knew that they could scare, scale their money faster and wanted to take more risk. And then some of our investors that, you know, were able to buy a bunch of those single family short sales from 2008, selling off a portfolio of those and upgrading into more of a, a triple net uh, opportunity um, where they're building generational wealth. So that's, again, coming back to the communication aspect with our clients, understanding what their financial goals are, and then finding the right opportunity and keeping that communication line open with the lenders, the appraisals, and understanding what we're seeing on an economical, larger economical scale so that we can uh, invest the money smart locally. Yep, yeah, definitely. So I was I was also very blown away by, you know, when I actually took a step back and saw the, the entire ecosystem of all the deals you guys were working, you know, this guy's moving this and she has to move this, and it's pretty unbelievable the infrastructure that has to go into actually you guys thinking out, you know, all the moves before it happens because there's so many people that are leveling up at the same time. And, and you know, there's 20 things that have to happen perfectly for it, for it to work for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. And honestly, our clients are, are all really good friends uh, by the time we're done with the deal. But what's nice about being at Pinnacle Commercial Group, someone like me, I work with six builders and developers, but I'm touching a lot of different asset types. So I'm doing land and development. I'm doing industrial sales boomers uh, leveled up our entire team with triple net opportunity sale lease backs more of those corporate leases that we're getting you know he's been huge with dollar generals we call him mr dollar general because he closed i think seven eight last year so that's pretty incredible so if a dollar general is coming through and being built in nebraska a boomer is probably gonna be the guy to call him that so again we're touching a lot of different asset types but by the time we sell that one you got to go place your money into something else and so that's what's nice about our team and how we're growing is each person's kind of focusing on a different asset, has a specialized niche, which is allowing us to kind of scale and, and find that opportunity to do those off-market deals and, and place money at a, a quicker pace than maybe what a larger national brokerage is, is doing because they might be, if you go into that as a team member, you might be focused on large apartment deals. But for us, you know, I'm doing a lot more volume of deals locally that I can uh, place money at a quicker pace and not be limited to to what kind of asset type I'm working on. Got it. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So what advice would you give to, you know, someone that's looking to maybe start doing some commercial transactions or has maybe has a commercial listing and they don't know what to do with or a possible listing or, or anyone who, who just really doesn't know what to do with the, with, with the commercial real estate side of things? Yeah, I think here locally in Lincoln and Omaha, you'll see a lot of Facebook groups, a lot of investors that do get together. And I think that's, that's really, really, that's amazing. Like there's no better way to get your skin in the game because if you really want to get into investing, you have to be, you have to be active. Everyone's capital investment is going to be a little bit different, but if you're going to get started, I'm going to just assume that you don't have as much capital as someone who's been in it 10 years or you don't have that trust with the lender. So I always tell people there's going to be a few different, like in this, after this pandemic and everything that's gone on, you're, you, one of the most key ingredients has been lending. Obviously, rates are really low. So those that have really s- succeeded are those that had the existing portfolio to leverage against. A bank's going to go and, and leverage more against them because they know they're going to get paid back. Makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. So 
having those conversations with your lender and having a, a broker that is constantly doing deals off market more, more in tune, not just a lot of activities, but those that are actually finding off market deals and presenting those, those are the people you want to keep close to you. And then having that, depending on what asset type you are, having that relationship with the property manager and getting those, those, uh, you know, expenses down or whatever your niche is. Like, you know, if you're getting into multifamily and you, you can do a little bit more property management yourself and are more of a handyman, maybe that's a good asset type for you to get in. But all that information and meeting like-kinded individuals, entrepreneurs, business owners that have the mindset to level you up. I think everyone in our community in the Nebraska area is really good about leveling you up. So if you can surround yourself with those like-kind individuals, the better off you're going to succeed and find more opportunity. Right. Yep. I mean, that just goes back to the old adage. I mean, you're the most liked five people you hang out, you hang out with the most. So it's uh, if you want to get into commercial, you better start finding some commercial people. Uh, that, and that's absolutely right. It's uh, definitely a network relationship here for sure. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you guys are doing different in commercial that maybe they're not doing in residential or vice versa? Well, I think – one of the biggest investments that I've made in with it, my own career has been giving into technology. And that's kind of why I'm sitting here with you is Verily has been a huge add on and huge value proposition for what I do for my clients and how I get exposure to meet new investors. So I've it just kind of changing the game in that matter where it's kind of been an old school where commercial real estate is definitely a lot about relationships, but we have an opportunity with social media and digital marketing where we can scale and meet new clients by utilizing that data and, and being smart with it so that I can, as our brand kind of grows from a branding perspective and also just uh, scaling our business. That's been one of our, our biggest, I mean, with everything we do, we do, we always do a just close video, not what we have for listings, but we're actually showing people that we're closing a lot of business, especially when I, when I joined Boomer and his team, uh, one of the things I noticed is I didn't realize how much business he'd done. He's astronomical amount of business, but by getting that exposure out, we're starting that we've, we've seen people like, Oh, okay, you're closing these dollar generals. I want to get one of those too. These, these seem like a no brainer when you really get into it. Right. So social media and digital marketing has been a huge add on for our team uh, and something that we can leverage as we continue to move forward. Yeah, for sure. That makes a lot of sense. And I've noticed too, that like, you know, even when I think back to when I first got into, you know, real estate and things like that, there, it is such a network game that sometimes it isolates newcomers or people outside of that, right? So mm -hmm. before, like, you weren't reaching people who were up and coming or, or who were just trying to get into it. So they didn't get to see your sales. They didn't get to see your networks. They didn't get to understand the Dollar Generals and, you know, how – how, you know, all of the multifamily leasing and every, everything mm -hmm. works. Like, I think that's one thing you've done that's made a big impact is that you're actually sharing that now. So it's not just reaching your network and, and like other agents, but it's also reaching, you know, those, those cl potential clients of the future who don't know anything or don't, and are just trying to like learn and get their, you know, get their toes wet and see what it's all about. But now they can actually like visualize and follow along with what you're doing so, you know, you don't know who the next big investor is going to be because maybe they're 18, maybe they're 19 today, but, th but they're starting to think that way and they're going into their careers and their journeys. And at some point they, they might be the next big investor. So right. I think that's and a big you, And you nailed it on the head. A lot of what, like that investment that I make into social media is not for that instant win, but it's a long term. If I put that time and energy into it, it's 10 years from now when that person is ready, they're the next investor. For sure. So yeah, you nailed it. Yep, I, th I think that's huge. And I've always, you know, one of my biggest personal frustrations with commercial has always been the lack of pictures <laughs> and, and, and like access to visualize the property before I have to make a call, right? And, you know, especially with like the new economy model, like consumers, buyers, renters, leasers, like they don't want to call to see if they like it or not. They'll, if they like it, they will call. Like they're really just looking to see if they don't like it. And, you know, so that they can just push out the ones they don't like. They don't want to waste their time. They don't waste their energy. And, and that, that was always a big part of commercial I felt was always really far behind was you had to call the leasing agent. You had to call, you know, the listing agent to just go see the property to even get a picture. I mean, you really just got the external images. And, well, that, you know, I can go to Google and do that. that that's nothing special. So we definitely, uh, I, I definitely appreciate and value that you guys are doing things outside of that 
older model. Right. And, and that is for us, it's understanding that, okay, in this market, inventory is going to move a lot quicker. But if we make that time and energy and put it towards, uh, for instance, like a Matterport scam or, or doing drone and doing that topography or doing the 6D technology with you, with our builders, if we start to understand the nuances of each and uh, each bit of technology, then when the market does shift, we're at a good position that we can leverage it in the right way. But it's always it's always moving and adapting so quick, and it, and it's just fascinating that for such one of the largest industries <laughs> and the economical on a larger economical scale, like it's just so mind boggling to me that there aren't a lot of younger brokers coming into the game uh, and kind of disrupting the space. But it's definitely soon. There's definitely a lot of people that will start to copy what we're doing, uh, and and but that I think that's what. You know, yeah, as they grow. should. Yeah, and they, and they should. And obviously that's what we want because our clients are looking at other brokers stuff. But yeah, it, it's going to start it's going to start shifting pretty quick, I think. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a huge impact. Once people start, you know, seeing what someone else does and implementing it into what they're doing, it just it drives the industry forward, which is better for, you know, it's better for the agents, better for the consumers. It's just better in general for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big impact. And I think you guys are definitely leading the way right now in commercial around here for sure with, with everything you're implementing. And I mean, you guys are a big proprietors of, you know, like NFC technology, things mm -hmm. like that too, which is near field communication for anyone who doesn't know, but it's, you know, it's taking those technologies and putting them into what you're doing on a day to day and, and just driving your business forward. And, and I think it's going to make a big shift in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's funny. You, you mentioned the NFC chip, for instance, I wasn't carrying around a, uh, an actual physical tangible business card. And then I met an, another broker looking at a larger commercial deal. And, and he's so used to that tangible thing. He, I, I touched my phone with his phone and it popped up and he was just mind blown, but <laughs> <laughs> you still have to adapt. He's like, I, I still need that. I still put it in my Rolodex and that's how he operates. So it's, it's just like anything in technology. You need to still work with that older generation for what they're comfortable with, but it's just fascinating. Uh, just, understanding how other people work and how used to the way it is in this industry and how it's going to shift. Yep. Yeah, definitely for sure. So that's a, that's a lot of insight for sure. And I appreciate um, you sharing it with us. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on? N no, I mean, I really do appreciate you having me on the set. Um, again, if, if you are looking to get into uh, commercial investments, definitely reach out to us at Pinnacle Commercial Group. I'd uh, love to have a conversation with you. Love to see what your investment goals are in the future. Not even if you're necessarily doing something today, but it's nice, again, going back to communication, having that dialogue today. Uh, and then soon when that day when you are ready, you, you're looking towards the and setting your goals and, and working towards those goals. So. Uh, definitely reach us and you can find us at pinnaclecommercial.com perfect and uh, do you have a number that they can reach you guys at well I'll just throw out my own personal line not to be selfish wow. okay. <laughs> I love it but at 402-202-4348 and find me on any social media platform I'm constantly spreading spreading my beautiful face uh, <laughs> all across the internet platform you do that very well <laughs> yes so good job well appreciate you coming on Zach um Look forward to all the all the stuff you have going on in the future and following along and seeing what else we can make happen. All right. Thanks, Todd. Yep, exactly.